to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And I think I almost died of nerdgasms. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had... Is that what it's called now? Nerdgasms. I had so much fun at New York Comic Con. And now, mind you, I only went two of the four days. Um, my schedule was kind of limited because I had work. And I had to get back to work, and I have the long drive from Rochester to New York City. But let me Which tell you, she drove overnight both days, my man. I drove overnight, um, right after work, and I, you know, then of course I get to New York City, and I have like family obligations on top of everything, and I'm like, I just want to go to the goddamn con. Let me go. So um, yeah, you're not allowed to do that next year, by the way. Yeah, next year I'm telling, I'm like, you know, well, I mean, it's I'm gonna look at your mom and people, be like, other people no. have paid for a hotel room. I stay at my mom's house for free. Um, but let me tell you, I must have, I must have, I've been doing good. Deals. I've been trying been really I know Paul this is gonna sound odd to say I've been really trying to like change a little bit not being so negative all the time not being such a, an asshole uh, and I think someone looked out for me you know if, if you believe in some sort of like guardian angel whatever because after driving you know six hours overnight from Rochester to New York I found legal parking because I went I left Thursday night I get to my mother's house Friday morning and in New York City you know they have alternate side of the street parking and you know if you don't have a place to park your car you're fucked I mean, because what happens is, is between there's like th- between three hours, between like 1130 and 130, you have to move your car out of the way so the street sweepers could come clean the street mm-hmm. and then go back. Now, in my neighborhood, now that I did this is fucking, you know, my old neighborhood, this is downtown Manhattan. This is like, you know, one of the most, not most, but, you know, a pretty population crowded area. And people have... Th- People have just gotten used to the idea of they will double park their cars on the other side of the street, you know, wait for the wait for the street sweeper to go by. And then everyone goes back. I mean, and I guess there are enough people that are <laughs> aren't working right now where they can sit there in their cars and, and you know, and I don't got time for that bullshit. I got to go to Comic-Con. But let me tell you, for me to find legal parking on a Friday morning for Friday, you know, as in I don't have to move the car, uh, my guardian angel or, or whatever, you know, uh, you know, my guardian demon, uh, <laughs> someone must have been looking out for me because <laughs> I found parking because I knew I there was no way in hell I was going to drive my car to the actual Jacob Javits Center where they were having it because I know and I've been there I've been to Jacob Javits Center before several times for um, car shows and stuff like that right. I know they would have been asking 40 or 50 dollars if not more to park that's fucked up relatively close to the con I mean wow. it's New York City you know what I'm saying it's like you know they <clears throat> they know how to fuck so did you walk or something or no 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 I know I took public transportation um the fact fastest way or the, the I guess the least pain in the ass way would have been to uh I, what I did I just took the subway from my mom's house so I, so I found legal parking grabbed all my gear you know I had now I know we were I was going to meet up with Matt uh for, you know for I don't know we have we didn't really discuss this yet on the show itself but uh Matt uh, one of your uh, guys from uh the Tsunami Faithful podcast him and I had plans Tsunami Faithful.com Tsunami Faithful.com uh him and I had plans to you know you know we were trying to set up for weeks now we were trying to set up interviews Interviews. We were trying to set up. We were trying to follow up the schedule, and I was I was literally overwhelmed by how much stuff was going on at the at Comic Con. There were literally three levels of stuff going on. Oh yeah, you, you know, you, you know, you had the con floor, which in and of itself, which is what I spent most of the time on. The con floor was, you know, that's the granddaddy. That's like, you know, then you had the whole you had a whole floor basically dedicated to panels, 
And then you had um, panels and 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 um, uh, autograph sessions and stuff like that, like celebrities during you know the, that and that was the whole floor was just okay. You want to take a picture with you know so and so celebrity? Okay, you know you have to make an arrangement. Of course you have to pay, and you know. Um, and then the other one was uh, the whole other floor was Artist Alley, where basically all these artists would sit and and, right. and in, my, in my two days there and all the hours I spent there, I didn't even get a chance to even touch fucking Artist Alley. You know, I I, I thank goodness I and I did it because I was gonna bring some comics with me just to see if I could get some autographs but in my two days there in my two full days there i didn't even get a chance to touch artist alley <laughs> so um so we get to the, so welcome get, to cons oh, oh it was <laughs> and and you know they said this year new york comic con it out it outdid san diego outdid san diego now san diego you know was the fucking gold standard for yeah. comic cons and now well, new york go big or go home we fucking uh <laughs> well if you think about it like there are some people like for example i know steve bloom goes every single year um like there there are certain uh voice actors and regular actors that just go to that con mm-hmm. so it's interesting and some of them are actually bigger than the ones that go to new york comic con so it's kind of weird to have this con nycc to be even bigger than uh san diego because it's usually the other way around so well yeah that's the good thing news, is, is that is that you know san diego comic con was always like the big dog that was the one right. where like i always had it on my bucket list you know what I'm saying? before i die <laughs> i'm gonna go to san diego comic con well this year i went to new york comic con which actually beat out san diego comic con and mm-hmm. like i said i have and anybody you know I, a couple of our listeners actually follow me on facebook any of my friends you know that that people that already know me that that are friends with me on Facebook know that I met you know just on the pictures alone that I took I met so many you know celebrities yeah. I met so many uh, cosplayers you know people with like uh, what's the word I'm looking for like screen quality right. cosplay well just for just for viewers so you guys just for listeners that you guys can uh, uh, Instagram dot com slash geeky ink productions has pictures up um, you have some up too probably on your Instagram um actually no no because what I did was we had set up where I I was I I signed out of my personal Instagram and used the geeky ink. Oh, okay. Produ- that's right, geeky G E E K E ink I N C Productions all spelled out and yeah. and all the pictures I took and I'll be honest with you I wish I had more time to like because there was just right. such remarkable cosplay I mean people Dan wait 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 was, let me stop you there how many how many people were dressed up like Attack on Titan Oh my God dude I, uh, <laughs> so many people now you know and you know and I'm not gonna lie you know I probably watched maybe three or four episodes of attack on titan i had no idea what like the logo was like on the brown jackets yeah, yeah so there were people you know and it didn't even i saw the i saw the logo a couple times but then like when i saw people as a group you know like then it clicked on my head oh that's attack on, well first well i saw people with the jackets but then i saw this i saw the, yeah. these people as a group but with the big um the big things hanging off their legs like not the legs you know the things they used to yeah like, yeah fly across exactly so these people you know and i mean god bless them i mean the people that they do the cosplay when you have this big gigantic bulky piece of of of, of uh, equipment that you have to strap to make yourself like because it's real easy okay i'm gonna just wear you know khaki pants and a brown jacket and put the logo on it no these are people there are people who came with the full fucking yeah. uh the big ejector packs or whatever they call those things on the, on their, that they wear on their sides and then you know you had like four or five people doing it together like yeah. obviously these are friends and obviously fans and uh just to see them all walk together and it's like it's so fucking surreal to like, oh shit, that's I saw that on TV. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it's 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 incredible to see how um, how much Attack on Titan has affected the anime industry. Mm-hmm. And it's the thing is, is like we've actually posted a couple things on um, one thing actually from New York Comic Con. New York City Comic Con, or whatever, you know what I mean. Um, basically, because of Attack on Titan, it's actually brought the um, Magna, Magna, the uh, the Ma- you know the the, the anime. Um, I'm trying to say it, and I'm, I'm not having any luck today. It's brought that industry back. All the all the books that are being put out. Oh, manga, manga, yeah. The, all of that <laughs> stuff. I don't know why I had tr- I have trouble saying that, but. Um, yeah, the, there's an article out there from um, Publishers Weekly. I actually put it up on Toonami News on Twitter. Basically, um, Attack on Titan has actually reinvigorated that industry and has brought it back. Um, so it, it's it's really interesting to see how Attack on Titan has been one of those things that's you know actually um, made the industry better. Yeah, so because no, I know we're gonna I don't know if we're gonna say that for the second half of the show, but there were some anime announcements. I'm pretty sure obviously you went oh. over it on the Tsunami Faithful. Yeah, we, we, they're gonna be talked about on Tsunami Faithful podcast. So we don't have to talk about those. Um, but I did. I mean, I and you know just this is this is literally towards the end of my my Comic Con trip. I I had ex- I got my I got my schedule wrong. 
and I thought I was going to the Adult Swim uh, panel. Mm -hmm. I had messed up and I had went to the, it was the Kill La Kill panel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those into anime or whatever, I guess, you know, came out last year. And it's this, it's this anime. It's, it's sort of weird. It kind of has like a, like a a tale, you know, every anime kind of has like a weird theme. This one is sort of like the threads of fate and everything has to do with like clothes and, and and the clothes have personalities, but then sometimes people wear like these giant mechs, which are considered as clothes. It was, it is a very, obviously, you know, anime being anime, you know, very, very out there, entertaining as fuck. Now, part of what they were, they played two episodes. They played one episode, which was, um, one of the first times in the United States where they were playing the dubbed version and they and they had one of the actresses there and um so they played one episode in english and this is now mind you i of course okay i got on the wrong line um these people were die hard fans i mean the room obviously if you're going to go to the panel i guess you're a fan but it's so weird to walk into a room where like everybody's into something and i have no idea it existed before that day and you know okay now everybody we're going to do the symbol that you know someone so you know (laughs) <laughs> and like, and everyone throws their hands up in the air like an X, you know, like, and I'm like, okay. And I did it just so I don't fucking feel out of, I felt like that person in church that follows the old lady because they don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> you know, sit, kneel, stand, sit, sit, you know. So, um, so it was just, and actually, I mean, and then what they played, then they played one of the later episodes, which I guess they called OVA, original something animation, original yeah, it's basically video a, animation. It's, yeah. And I guess, I guess technically that hasn't, that hasn't been officially released in the United States, but of course, if you know where to look online you can find it um <laughs> exactly but um so we watched now that's they didn't they haven't even gotten to that episode yet to dub so that was in sub but i mean as soon as they said ova original video animation whatever the fucking room went ape shit you know and there were people dressed up like the characters you know like up to the point where that particular this particular anime it's a lot of girls in skimpy clothes like you know i mean they're original they're like traditionally like in school girl outfits you yep. know no surprise there and then, <laughs> and then when they transform into their battle mode or whatever, where it turns into like, well, one of the, there's, and the cool thing about like each character has its own, has like 50 different versions of stuff that they wear, but there's actually one version where the, the, the schoolgirl clothes turns into like a battle armor version of schoolgirl clothes. <laughs> and, uh, but they were, they well, were, uh-huh. I'm sure you saw why it's going to be hard to air on TV too. Yeah, there's, well, see, in this particular show, that one, you know what it is? It's, there's no nudity per se. No. But, I mean, there are scenes where, like, when she's in the middle of, quote unquote, transforming, where her, her, they show her nude form, like a, like a silhouette, or, you know, and there is a ton of underboob. <laughs> There's always yeah. like something just about covering her, her the nipple, and then tons of un- underboob. If you like underboob, this is the show for you. Kill that kill. Well, see, that's a, that's where I think the line is being drawn right now because you know a, a lot of people want this show on Toonami, but the problem is is there's this that the the lead character's um costume so to speak she's basically uh, or battle naked. yeah basically she's like pretty much naked and see the thing is is Adult Swim can get away with swearing and if it gets too graphic they can just you know put a bleep in. Uh, nudity is another thing. <laughs> yeah. So that one's that's the whole reason why, like when I when I say on the Tsunami Faithful podcast, like Kill the Kill is going to be a hard one for them to put on Tsunami. And if they do accomplish that, I'm going to be amazed. Yeah. I think um, if they edit out, because I mean, really, the only time you really see, like, I mean, not like I said, and it's not nudity when she's right. like transforming, you'll see the nude form, as in you know, not you know, it's obviously a body without clothes on, but well, it's not like you can see nipples. It's just sort of like yeah, it's just it's. Really Really like you're gonna have to cut out those or, yeah, or edit out those scenes real you know? yeah exactly but again like the also the other problem is is you know this anime is gonna be you know the, the people don't want it to be cut at all they don't want anything taken out of it because you know it takes away from the anime so it, it's gonna be interesting to see if one it does end up on Toonami because a lot of people have requested it mm-hmm. and two if it does end up on Toonami what did they do to make it so it could be on Toonami because I, I I know for a fact that and I believe it's Aniplex that has Kill the Kill yeah they were the- um you know it, it's gonna be really hard for them to go okay now you can put it on because 
I'm <laughs> sure they don't want anything cut out either, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and even, like, when they even walk around, like, I guess when they're in between outfits, like, basically, like, like a utility belt, but the utility belt um, basically just covers their crotch. Like, <laughs> like it sags down just enough. So, I mean, I mean, a lot of the anime does do that kind of stuff where the skirt's, like, right there, but the, you never see anything, so... Yeah. And if there is something... If the skirt does come up, there is something there, so there's nothing... Whatever, but, yeah, you know, it, this is one of those ones that... Is yeah. Gonna gonna be really be, it's gonna be hard, but I mean, I, it's gonna I, be really interesting to see it on TV at all because you know I don't think anybody's gonna be able to do it unless you put it on like HBO or something. But it, but, was, it was definitely an eye-opening experience because you know for me to walk oh, yeah. into a panel having no fucking idea what I was walking into. Oh, imagine! And I, and I left, I left thoroughly impressed. Yeah. A, a, imagine, imagine having an Attack on Titan panel. I'm, sur- I'm like, surprised they didn't. I think only because well, there's nothing new to announce, right? Right. Well, I, I think that basic. Well, I don't think you can do any fan panels at New York Comic Con, so mm-hmm. yeah. Probably not. Um, but there is one thing that I've been teasing that you did, and I think a lot of people want to hear what that is because, you know, mm-hmm. I've been teasing it. <laughs> what happened to you? What was the good thing that happened to you and may continue to happen to you? Oh, okay. So um, now Matt and I – because Matt and I – Matt and I totally did not cross paths at all the first day, which once again shows you how big fucking Comic-Con is, that we were both there for hours on end and didn't even walk by each other. Why? Because we were on two different fucking levels. I was <laughs> – I was on the floor right. and Matt was on like basically there was like I said there was a like a level dedicated to panels um which don't get me wrong I mean Matt I mean we're both there in the capacity of we're both there in the p- capacity of press um I kind of like shit if I'm gonna be here I'm gonna try to enjoy myself Matt being the good soldier that he is you know and 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 he was genuinely enthusiastic to go to these panels like he went to a bunch of panels he literally had like his day planned around panels and don't get me wrong Matt is a good dude and I want to work with him in the future but it's like to go to panels at comic-con that's like saying you want to go to the super bowl and just sit in the fucking locker room you know what i'm saying i mean i get you know i guess everybody has their own like comic-con experience but like i was just like it just blew my mind like he goes okay i'm gonna go to this panel that panel this i'm like but there's so much shit upstairs you know but so (laughs) he's a good soldier he's a good soldier and 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 i'm looking to work with him again um now that i know what to expect uh, him and i next time we work together we're gonna fucking tear it up and matt got some really good interviews you know uh you could go to geeky inc productions right now and see the interview he did for legend of Korra. you know yep, the... inc.com it's actually got over a thousand it's at a thousand ninety nine views and it's actually only been up for maybe a day or two so that's pretty goddamn good and it was for legend um, of Korra. for those who don't know that's the last airbender sequel series yeah. thanks again to nickelodeon for doing that and got and it's got david faustino for you know for the uninitiated david was one of the people that actually retweeted it which made the video more popular so thank you david for doing that and so um so so matt and i were downstairs trying to get an interview and i guess i don't know should i go into this story about what interview we were trying to get or uh was it was it a certain interview that didn't happen yeah um um let's 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 talk about that in another time because okay well, well, okay well that uh, i'll have something going on with that so don't yeah, worry so, i mean well i mean without getting without getting uh without mentioning names without mentioning names I, there was an interview that i was trying to line up um uh, there was i don't want to say miscommunication but you know i just thought that things were going to be a little more easier smooth. for us to, to and unfortunately it didn't go smooth and i'll mind you it has really nothing to do with the person we'll talk about this at some other time but uh you know and the person's hand and you know and i can't blame a person's handlers that's the reason a celebrity has handlers because you don't want to be the jerk and like turn away fans and stuff like that you need people that are kind of like no no you got to come back tomorrow no no you got to do this now you, you know saying so i'm not mad at this uh, particular celebrity uh like i said their handlers were kind Kind of, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be. Okay, pissed. let me just say it. They were dicks. <laughs> like, the handlers were kind of dicks. But then again, that's a handler's job. I mean, you know, a, a, like if we, a bodyguard, a bodyguard's going to be a dick too, because a bodyguard's job is to keep people away from the celebrity. You know what I'm saying? So in this situation, the handlers, and there was like waves of handlers we had to handle. So uh, we right. didn't, we didn't get that interview. But that's kind of like reinvigorated you and me to fucking. <laughs> we're going to. Oh, get that pissed me off. Interview, God damn it. Yes. Well, no. See, what happens is when Paul gets pissed off he takes other means yeah, right. of contacting people and it usually works and we have to just in the beginning his desk and start stopping our feet we're gonna get this fucking interview. <laughs> but so look for this when it happens quote, unquote, i guess we'll talk about it but yes. so okay so matt and i and this was like a couple of minutes after um after the unfortunate situation where we didn't get the interview sure. so we're downstairs and we're on the autograph floor so you know uh we're kind of like we're planning what we're gonna do next and it's already sort of the end of the day so we 
we're both kind of like at a loss like okay what are we gonna do next what are we gonna do next so we're there standing by ourselves minding our own business kind of off to the side and this guy walks by us and he's like oh you know do you would you guys mind uh coming over here to film something with us so we can because we need extras for our scene and so matt you know once again i love matt matt isn't like camera ready you know matt isn't like he doesn't want to be in front of the camera and if you watch his videos that's even his style where like the questions are asked and then he'll edit in the question itself like on a black screen you know matt does not want to be in front of the camera which is is just fine you know he's a great cameraman he's a great production manager whatever you want to call it uh me on the other hand i am the ham i <laughs> i can't wait to be in front of the fucking camera so we go and they go okay just go over here we need and there was like you know people i think i mean there was most of us obviously we all look like comic book fans i mean we're all kind of like chubby uh there was one kid dressed up like link from you know legend of zelda um right. so we're there and what did it turn out and and from what he announced like a day later at the panel at a, at, a, at, a, at the at the actual adult swim panel which is the one i missed which i thought i was going into the adult swim panel um triumph the insult comic dog and jack mcbrayer and and you know triumph the insult comic dog is robert smigel you know he had a show on on comedy central called tv funhouse um he did a whole bunch of uh sketches for saturday night live you know for the i think the one pretty much everyone knows about the ambiguously gay duo you know he was behind that um he was a writer on conan for for a bunch of years um and if you look and obviously anyone listening to the show is a nerd uh look up triumph insult comic dog star wars because there was a time where they went and they fucking they just insulted everybody at, at waiting online to go see attack of the clones years ago um you know robert smigel funny fucking guy and jack mcbrayer which you know for those people you know once again if the name doesn't ring a bell he plays kenneth on 30 rock mm-hmm. you know the, the the page that's kind of like a southern bumpkin character and uh he's also he was the voice of fix it felix and wreck it ralph you know and you know when you look at the character fix it felix i mean they made him look exactly like jack mcbrayer you know and he has that midwest look to him you know very innocent face or whatever you know like you know it, it'd be hard to take him seriously if he was pissed off or anything like that because he just looks so innocent and nice so apparently and after doing a little research i found out that they're doing a tv show that they're recording for adult swim and it's so early in the process that there's no official name you know it's you know it's being credited as the triumph the install comic dog slash jack mcbrayer project i don't think they have a name for it but what it is it's going to be a scripted show it's partly scripted part man on the street so uh the gist of the show is that jack mcbrayer plays a character sort of like a an 80s child actor and and he he did a show with Triumph where it was sort of like a lassie show, you know, where they work together. And now it's years later and they're trying to get Jack's character back into the spotlight, back to being famous. And now because uh, his, his first name in the show is Jack, but he has a, a it's not his last name is not McBrayer. You know, he's playing a character in the show now. Uh, so they go, OK, we need some, you know, we need some extras. All right, everyone stand over here. So we're standing in line. And so they go. Now, mind you, Robert Smigel, the guy who plays, uh, you know, Triumph Insult Comic Dog, who like you know he's there like wearing like knee pads and stuff like that because he's kneeling on the floor to, to do the puppetry but he's also the director of the show so he's telling the cameraman what to do and so and i had said to the to the assistant that called us asked us if we wanted and i'm like look if you need me to do anything i'm your man you know once again i'm a fucking ham i want to be in front of that screen that, that camera <laughs> yeah yes so he goes all right so they did it you know by the time we got there they did a sketch with the guy in front of us and you know they were kind of feeding him questions like you know feeding him the answers to the questions just so like you know trying and so comic dog could fucking throw in you know jo- jokes and stuff so it's jack mcbrayer sitting at a table and and triumph and saw comic dog and they go like okay we need you know and then like you know wh- who's next or whatever now mind you there was like a couple people in front of me and he then robert smigel pointed to me and he's like he goes come here come. and he goes are you willing to, are you willing to take your shirt off i said hell yeah so the the gist of the and now mind you they even had i guess they were planning this uh on the sign where it's like meet jack or whatever you know they had like you know 40 dollars for an autograph you know, fifty dollars for a picture, uh, or whatever. And then it was like, oh no. Then the other thing was fifty dollars for Jack to rub lotion on your back. So they actually gave me like real money to put in my pocket. And you know, the joke is, you know, I'd like to have Jack rub lotion on my back, and I take the money out of my pocket and put on. And then here I am, <laughs> this fat hairy guy. Now, mind you, Jack McBrayer is such a uh, such a team player. Now, you know, he's done. Uh, he's part of the Upright Citizens Brigade, which is an improv comedy troupe. I mean, obviously, you know, you just for the joke, you have to you're you have to be down for anything, including rubbing the back of a fat hairy guy so and i told him even before i took the shirt off i'm like this is gonna look good because i got tattoos i'm hairy and he's like oh now right before he starts rubbing my back i didn't i didn't say this on camera and i should have well i mean because it was just between us i was saying you know i said now i could take this off my bucket list 
<laughs> getting Jack McBrayer to rub lotion on my back. Right. So, uh, you know, he rubs the lotion on my back. Uh, then, like, it looks like Triumph hands me, like, throws his throws the clothes in. Because I walk away with my shirt off. But I also have, like, my head hanging down in shame. Which is, you know, my little improv part of it. Um, but, you know, luckily, they I, I begged for someone to take a picture. It's one of the production guys took Matt's camera, Matt's cell phone or whatever, and took a picture of it. So I have it on my Facebook, you know, and it's so ridiculous that I'm here. I am at Comic-Con. Jack McBrayer, TV star, movie star, rubbing lotion on my back and trying to insult Comic Dog looking at it. So um, now at that particular time, because the first day I was wearing the Two Strangers, One Podcast t-shirt, I, you know, I, I had to, you know, and then, you know, just so I could stick out even more, I've got the big, bright yellow and black, like caution tape, and I taped it to the shirt just so I could stick out even more. And then the second day, you know, since that was going to be more of the panel day that, you know, me and, and we were going to do the interviews, I wore the Toonami Faithful shirt. So actually, you know, Toonami Faithful, Toonami and Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, you know, there's sort of like a roundabout connection. So in the beginning of the the part while I'm still <laughs> clothed, um, you can see uh, that I'm wearing the Toonami Faithful shirt. And of course, they wanted, now they asked me, I, they asked me to take off my my lanyard, my press pass, because uh, my lanyard had the Batman logo on it. I had a one that said, keep calm and call Batman. Um, you know, it was like my own personal lanyard. Um, they just, you know, for legal reasons, they don't want to have the Batman symbol. Right. And so they gave, they gave me like this whole other different pass just to wear. And then, you know, the funny thing is that I'm there with the shirt off, but the pat, with the pass still on, you know, which I think looks funny on a fat guy, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was no reason for for me to have that pass on me but um yeah, and it's so weird like i'm you know i'm explaining i'm trying to explain this to friends of mine online and stuff like that and like well why do you have your shirt off is it because it's fucking funny that a fat guy <laughs> you know people are like i don't why do you have your shirt off and i'm like because he's rubbing lotion on me rubbing lotion on a fat hairy guy is funny that's comedy so uh you know it's sad that i have to fucking explain that to some people right. but um <laughs> and wouldn't you know it like two days later i had got a call from one of the production guys the guy that because you know that you have to sign you you sign a uh, a release you know use you know giving them permission to use your image and stuff like that and then what they do is on the release paper itself there's like this big like number and then they take a picture of you so you you know they can you know they can keep track of whose auto you know whose signature went on what paper and and so the guy actually called me and said you know we may want you to come down to the studio and record with us so I mean you know and plus I know I know I look like a psycho because I have the fucking bald head I have the fucking biker goatee so I. I am, you know, like just for the time being, for the couple, next couple of months, I'm going to keep the bald head and the biker goatee. You know, hopefully if they want to come and I will be more than happy to, you know. <laughs> so you almost became famous. Sweet. Yeah. I, you know, and plus, so, you know, and at the time I was representing the Toonami Faithful podcast. So, uh, well, yeah, Matt, Matt was joking with me. He's like, you know, if what they recorded with Chris actually gets on the air, <laughs> you're going to be getting a lot of hits. I'm like, go on. <laughs> so um, hopefully, every, hopefully it happens again and we can. I would love to go down and record. Is it going to be in New York City or something? Or? Oh, I'm assuming if they if they call me if they call me, I'm assuming the studios in New York City because you know uh, Robert Smigel, you know he pretty much he's, he's he was based out of because he worked a lot with Conan, but back when Conan was still in New York City. Right. Know? I mean, I know he's worked with Conan in, in L.A. also, but I think Robert Smigel's a, a city New York City boy. Okay, so I told him. I mean, I said, look, if you need me, I'm there. <laughs> you know I, I mean? I'll probably I'll come down and we'll record a uh, we'll record some behind the scenes if they allow us. Yeah. And and I you know I'm pretty sure if they if they have me come down on I me mean, I I be you know I say look can I bring a person or two with me? <laughs> Damn straight you are. You know, and Matt I guess Matt was my good luck charm also. So I don't want to you know. <laughs> there's actually it's funny that you say that because Matt there's actually a picture of Matt next to uh, um, Smeagol mm -hmm. and I, I I had to put it up on on the Instagram page <laughs> and I put on there I was like apparently Smeagol is scared of Matt because <laughs> it looks that's what it looks like it looks like Smeagol is like scared of him but um yeah so it, it, i'm glad that you guys had fun i'm glad that we got what we got yeah, and i mean I, I mean i haven't gotten <coughs> halfway through the fucking stories there yeah, i mean until you gotta my... understand like there's a like in atlanta for example momocon has become so big that they had to use two hotels mm -hmm. um the big one is dragon con and that uses i think it's just three hotels it might be more but it, it, it's that big that they have to use three hotels to house the whole convention. So trust me, I know what you're talking about. It was, you know, I mean, like I said, I mean, I had made it in my bucket list. Okay, I want to go to San Diego Comic Con. Now I'm sort of like, fuck San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't know. Well, no, I don't. Don't have to mean that. But you know, I mean, I'm so glad that New York. <laughs> They'll be like, "Fuck you too. You're not coming as <laughs> yeah, press pass." <laughs> but, you know, just the fact that they, you know, that that you know, for this year at least, you know, breaking breaking the records of San Diego Comic Con. I mean, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm a New York City boy, and I, I kind of, you know, I'm a big nerd when it comes to, you know, I love I love my city. I love my hometown, and to see them like, and not only like break the record, but like it, it wasn't like they broke it by a couple thousand. I believe like San Diego Comic Con at its heaviest or its most was at one. 31 and then new york comic con was at 150 150 000 people you know and it was just like you know and mind you and that's not even including all the side um things that were going on they even called it like super week like there was a whole week worth of it of, of, of activities set up like not it wasn't just comic con and also i mean i have a i have a whole bunch of stories to say but i seriously and it was the first person i spoke to and it kind of set the it set the mood for the for the weekend, uh, Greg Capullo. Now, anybody who's who's into any kind of DC comics recently, I mean, D- Greg Capullo years ago, you know, he was part of Image. Um, he, you know, he right. had a lo- he he did like an eighty issue run on the Spawn comics. Basically, you know, got it after Todd McFarlane. Besides, after the guy who created the fucking comics, uh, handed it off. He handed it off to Greg Capullo. Now, Greg Capullo now works for DC. Um, you know, I would have to say he's like he's definitely like top five, like of the people that actually, you know, like of all the people that are at. DC, DC, you know, you know, and I don't want to say, you know, and he's an artist. I mean, you know, he's not, he's not even part, he's not even a businessman. I mean, this guy is an artist. I mean, anybody who's followed like the Court of Owls storyline on, you know, the Batman, um, the death of the family, um, you know, anyone who's watched DC, look at the DC comics recently where, you know, not like the Joker is basically cut off his own face, but then he's wearing his face, you know, part of the story was Joker cuts off his face and leaves it. He, he escapes Arkham Asylum and cuts off his face, Jesus. leaves the face, leaves his own face in the cell, sort of like a fuck you to, to all the people that you know were trying to get him then he breaks back into arkham asylum and puts back a year later or eight months later and he puts his own rotting face back on it's almost like a mask and it's all like stapled on it's a it's a really weird fucked up looking thing now greg capullo this is the artist that is doing this like he's he's a great guy like i said he doing you know working for image and doing spawn I mean, obviously shows you the the kind of like outrageous, super detailed uh, work that he does. And, and like I said, he's been working with DC. You know, we're doing Batman mostly. And I had so over to the side because one of the big things at Comic-Con was, you know, the Batman 75th anniversary and that they were releasing the Batman uh, postage stamps. Uh, and there was right. even there was a whole part set up where they had um, all the movie Batman costumes. You know, they, unfortunately, they didn't have the, the 66 Batman. But I mean, I don't know if these were originals. I wouldn't be surprised if they were originals or replicas. But, you know, they had like, you know, you could walk up and take a good look at the I mean, if they were in gl- glass booths. But you know, I'm you sure it was them. probably one of the ones that was worn. It's just, you know. Yeah, it's, I don't I don't know exactly the, the story behind. But I mean, it was cool just to fucking go and look and see, you know, if these weren't the real ones, these were to the detail accurate uh replicas so i'm going there and i'm looking at the pictures i mean i'm looking at the at the suits and it's cool and i look over and greg capullo he's just standing there mind you he's he's about 40 minutes away from hosting a panel being one of the you know the, the guest people at a panel and like i mean i guess people either they don't know who he is or they don't want to bother him i said fuck that i'm gonna go <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking right up to him. And of course, you know, I have a bald head. He has a bald head. He goes, oh, look, we go to the same barber, you know, and and, and we had had, and I just started, you know, I'm saying, look, I'm a great big fan of your work. And, you know, I've listened to you because know, and he's, I, I, I became more familiar with the person that he was because he did a podcast with Kevin Smith called The Fat Man on Batman, which is, he's done a couple episodes of that. And right. So we're going back and forth and he's on the lanyard that he's wearing. He's wearing the, you know, they, I guess they gave him the lanyard for Gotham, you know, the, the Batman prequel series, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm like, oh, what do you think? In Gotham. And he goes, you know, I haven't seen it yet. And it just blew my fucking mind. I'm like, how do you, how does a guy who, you know, <laughs> is so entrenched in Batman lore, a guy who's like reinvented Batman and, and has added to the fucking mythos, I mean, this shit is going to be, you know, part of canon 50 years from now. Um, You know, he hasn't watched Gotham. So here I am, I'm telling him, because he, he, then he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, I think the fucking show's awesome. I mean, you know, it's going a different direction. You know, and him and I got into like a 10 minute conversation about Gotham. And I'm telling him about about Gotham. It is the it was the most fucking one of the most surreal things I've ever had in my life. And then so 
talking about them so just talking about TV, we kind of our conversation kind of Did you have a nerdgasm. Oh my I can't believe you know, for a guy that, that you know you know, and not that I'm not saying, oh, how could a guy that not, not watch Batman? I'm just talking about in the surreal, uh, you know, I, I must have done, I must, I got to keep doing good deeds, I guess, because for me to sit, to stand there and talk to fucking Greg Capullo about Gotham, where I'm telling him what the fuck's going on in the show. It is a weird, you know, <laughs> life is a weird fucking thing. Man. So, oh, and, and by the way, since, since we're speaking about Gotham, it actually got, it's actually has a full season now. It's going to have about 22 episodes, which is pretty good. And now that gives them a chance to pace out the episodes. Exactly. Have, have story arcs, you know. Now it's it's because some of these shows they they'll put out the first couple episodes and then what they do is they 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 gauge fan reaction on what characters should they push, what characters should they you know add. And I mean, don't be me wrong, they're throwing a lot of stuff at the wall because I heard now they want to bring in Hush. Uh, they want to bring in um, oh, there's a few more characters, but I mean, for anyone who's watched the the storyline Hush, where you know it's like about like a guy who basically cuts his own face off and and puts on like he he becomes he impersonates Bruce Wayne and stuff like that. But then it's a long story. But uh, so they're kind of like they're bringing in all these characters. Like I said, yes, they're throwing a lot at the wall to see what sticks. But I mean, I'm enjoying it. I honestly think Gotham is a good show. You know, and I like is that it's unusual enough where it could fit in a in a superhero universe. But of course, you know, it's trying to stay grounded a little bit of reality. You know, it's, it's like, OK, we're a little bit grounded in reality, but let's get a little crazy. You know, they, like, you know, they had an episode where a guy is like handcuffing people to weather balloons and sending them into, you know, <laughs> letting them fly off into, you know, he's going he's he's basically doing he's an early version of Batman where he's finding bad people, handcuffing them to weather balloons and let it, <laughs> and they're lifting off into the, atis, the stratosphere or whatever. So um, I really like where Gotham's going. I just I can't believe that I'm the one telling Greg Capullo right. about the show. <laughs> so well, Con, New York Comic Con was I, and I. I, that's just like the first story I have. I have like right. ten more at least, but that was just a such an awesome, awesome experience. Um, but I think we should go to commercial break because yeah. we have some geeky stuff to talk about. Plus, you know, we can you have to go to work here, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is the most annoying part about it too. Yeah. Plus, people are talking in the background. So I guess so. We'll be back with more dick and fart jokes. This episode of Two Strangers One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. Eleven fifteen East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comics etc one. Click and hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient, getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click-the-letter-n-hit.com. That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. We're back. So Paul, and I'm gonna, I've and been... I'm, gonna, I'm gonna apologize real quick. If you hear any background noise, that's me, and I apologize. Okay. Paul is no longer; he's not in his bunker right now. So no, <laughs> there's a reason for that, and I will. He's podcasting talk about in that. public places, but okay. <laughs> no, it's not that. Uh, but, but I will be talking about that soon. So. so what do you have for us, Paul? What, what, what do we? Let's get to the nerdy news. Yeah, I know. I'm the one that's the nerdy news. The nerdy news. We need some. We need to put up an intro for the nerdy news. Why you gotta make fun of the Tsunami Faithful podcast like that? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Anyways, um, okay, so let's talk about some nerdy news here. Uh, maybe we will do an intro for this. I don't know. I do have the means to do that, Chris. <laughs> well, I think. I... <laughs> 
<laughs> he was like, wait a minute. <laughs> should should we go? I mean, the big one that just like was released like a day ago. Um, um yes, yeah, so we're gonna start with the biggest one. Um, which is DC unleashed upon us a massive list of DC movies that are coming out through 2020, and that this list before we even get in started into it does not include um a standalone Batman or a standalone Superman movie, which could be included in this eventually. Um, well, actually, uh, not to not to cut you off, there is kind of there is kind of going to be a Batman movie though. They're they are doing or one of the things. I mean, I could be wrong. There, I I believe there was announced a Lego Batman movie. Yes, there is a Lego Batman movie based uh, off totally as a spinoff from the Lego movie. Um, so there is kind of going to be right. a standalone Batman movie. But I mean, I just just want to throw that in there. Okay. Um, let me get down. Let me get through the list here. They don't. They don't really give me a list on comingsoon.com, but um, let's see. 2006, uh, Batman vs. Sur- 2016, wow. <laughs> 2000, I mean, 2016. Of Justice movement. Yes, I know. Um, 2016, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of uh, Justice. Um, Suicide Squad is also going to be released in 2016. Um, apparently, it's being placed in the August 5th, 2016 release date. Mm. Um, and it also talks about some other Warner Brothers movies in here, but I'm not going to talk about those. Uh, like you were talking about, um, Lego Batman movie, it's coming in 2017. They've put it at the May 26th, uh, 2017 date. A, uh, solo Wonder Woman movie is coming. <laughs> June 23rd. Um, and Justice League Part 1, I guess is how they're counting it, uh, deeming, titling these movies now. Uh, Part 1 is coming November 10th, 2017. Uh, so far, it's supposed to include Ben Affleck, uh, Henry Henry um, Cavill, um, Amy Adams. All three of those people are going to be in this Justice League movie. Apparently, that's been um, confirmed. Uh, 2018, um, The Flash will be March 23rd, 2018. The guy who plays The Flash was just announced, actually, the other day. I don't. And people are pissed because it's not the guy from the show. Yeah, and I think it should be the guy from the show, but... I mean, um, it would be it would be kind of weird because, like, when they were talking about, like, when there was originally the idea of um, having, uh, what's-his-face play Ra's Ra- Ra- Ghul, um, Liam Neeson, right. you know, a lot of people were like, oh, well, if Liam Neeson plays Ra's Ra- Ghul, that means that the Flash and Arrow series take place in the same universe no, as the no, Batman. I, uh, and I mean, like, I said, can't you just, like, accept the fact that, first of all, if Liam Neeson had done it, it would have been fucking awesome. You know, well, it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily also, mean that it's it's the same universe. I mean, just have Liam Neeson do it because he's right. fucking Liam Neeson. And also, <laughs> if you think about it, it still makes sense because the Lazarus Pit. Yeah, of course. Would, yeah, he, he could still be that age at using the Lazarus Pit. So you know, uh, but let me get back into this list. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, Aquaman, I think is his name. Yes, Aquaman. Um, who is Jason? Jason Moma, I believe. Jason, is his name. Jason Momoa. That was actually just confirmed yesterday, I believe. Yeah, from Game of uh, Thrones, he plays uh, right. Cal Drago. Um, July twenty seventh. 2018 is when that's coming. Uh, 2019, which I'm kind of surprised that Shazam is all the way out in 2019, but uh, the one that's starring uh, Dwayne Johnson it is... It doesn't Ad- matter what your name is! No, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Um, April 5th, 2019, that's coming out, which, again, that, that seems so far away for them to announce what, you know, to announce what they did, but whatever. Um, Justice League Part 2 will also be out in 2019. That comes out June 14th, June 2019. 14th. Hmm, I wonder what special day is June 14th. Hmm. What's June 14th? It's my birthday, man. Oh, fuck <laughs> So Justice League Part 2. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. But then again, this list is subject to change because this is like the fucking like 10th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That we've Obviously, seen. yeah. Um, okay, and then we come to 2020, which, damn, that's a long way away. Um, two solo films, Cyborg, which I'm actually excited for. Yes. Um, Ray Fisher, who is going to be Cyborg, April 3rd, uh, 2020. I'm kind of hoping that they do do this, and maybe he can be a part of, because apparently Teen Titans is going to get their own TV series. Um, it would be interesting to see if, like, they include him as the character in that. I don't think they will, because they like not to do that. Yeah. But, you know, it would be interesting to see that. And, and then... is like, he looks like fucking Cyborg. Like, I, right. you know, I, I, like, of all the casting that's been announced for, for this movie, like, Ray Fisher is the one person that, like, I am 1,000% behind. I mean, he looks like fucking Cyborg. And, and you know, I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah, and, and the last thing that's been um, announced is there's going to be a reboot of Green Lantern. 
on June 19th, 2020. Um, nobody has been announced to play it, but um, suffice to say, it probably won't be Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, I mean, by that time, who knows? You know, uh, Deadpool by the way, may have been a, maybe a series. You know, Deadpool right. may turn into a thing. So. And and we don't know anything about whether or not he's going to actually be Deadpool in the movie coming up. But obviously, if he did the test footage, I can't see you know him not being Deadpool. So hopefully that happens because a lot of people liked him as Deadpool. So um, we'll see what happens. Um, and then the other thing that I was mentioning too was um, they mentioned that there's supposed to be... Okay, Warner Brothers actually confirmed that there's going to be a solo film for Batman and Superman. Um, and they are also in development, but there's no release date for them as of right now so um look for those to somehow <laughs> come into this schedule that is already um huge in my opinion um but one thing one thing that i said kind of on twitter yesterday was i just hope that dc doesn't move away from doing tv series because they're very good at doing tv series mm. as well as marvel is now too but you know over the years they've been able to do really good tv series like the flash they had a tv series for the flash before mm -hmm. which i hope they actually the original flash that was in that i think it was in the 80s wasn't it late 80s yeah, early 90s it was early 90s yeah early 90s i i really hope that they incorporate him into this new series like just have him have a cameo because that would be awesome um, they can make him like the original Flash, you know? right? Because you know, I think this Flash is the Barry Allen Flash, and then right. there's the uh, oh my god, I can't. Well, if you I remember the name of the other Flash, <laughs> if you remember uh, Smallville, they actually incorporated um, what's her name there from Lois and Clark, and she was Lana's mother. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was pretty good. Um, and there, there's another that was a, that was very successful for DC was Lois and Clark. I thought that was a great series that they did, and you know what? To be honest with you, like. Between between Smallville and that, it, in some parts it was actually better than Smallville. You know, some Smallville fans may come after me with daggers, but it, it's the truth. Lois and Clark was a really good series, and I and I and I kind of miss that series to be honest with you. I'm sure you can find them all on YouTube and Netflix and whatever, but you know, still good series. Jay so Garrick, I, I, I'm sorry, not to, <laughs> Jay Garrick was the name of the original Flash. So if they got oh, the actor from the, from the early it would be awesome. Flash TV show and had him, that would be awesome. Yeah, you know, just to kind of yeah, just to throw something in there because they always do kind of do something like that but I, I just really hope that they don't get away from tv series because i i like what they're doing right now i like gotham they do that very well just like i think that marvel while yes they have tv shows and they are putting stuff on netflix which is great and um we could talk about daredevil at another time but they really just released pictures about that. Well, I mean, uh, it's funny not to cut you off, but they're in the you know in the advertising like at Comic Con, like you know in the in the program, right. uh, they have like a whole page ad that advertises all the shows for, the, for you know DC Entertainment slash Warner Brothers. But it's funny because all these shows are on different networks because they have Flash and Arrow, which are CW. Right. You got Gotham, which is on Fox, and right. then you got Constantine, which is going to be on NBC. And then they're supposed to be uh, Fox is supposed to get oh fuck um Supergirl. But I'm just saying. It's like in, in advertising, they actually have different networks on the same fucking page. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I, it just, I, it's the you, first time I've ever seen anything like that. Well, it's the same thing with like, for example, um, Family Guy and American Dead. Uh, Family Guy is on Fox and it's also on Adult Swim because they'll do a new episode on Fox first and then a week later it comes on Adult Swim. Yeah, but I think so, so, but Cartoon Network and Fox, aren't they under the same umbrella? Or maybe no, could, no they're nope, not. Okay. No, no, they are not. No, 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 no. TBS and... Cartoon Network are under the same. Oh, okay. Well, so you, know, yeah. you make money. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's the reason why. <laughs> that's the reason why. Like, and apparently, Sketch was telling me the other day that um, Robot Chicken and another show from Adult Swim are going to end up on TBS too. Which I'm like, I didn't see that coming, but okay. Um, but that's why, like, you see, you've seen like American Dad and Family Guy on TBS because they're Turner properties as well. Anyways, um, it's interesting because you know, like, for example, Family Guy is on Fox and it's also on Adult Swim. But then, like, for example, American Dad is on TBS and Adult Swim, and I think. Actually, American Dad, it plays Monday the 20th, which is coming up the next couple of days. Um, it, the new episode, which is actually online. I don't know if they took it down yet, but it was up for 48 hours, the, the premiere episode. Um, all the new episodes of American Dad are now on TBS, and they play at 9, and then apparently the new episode of American Dad, an hour later, plays on Adult Swim, which is awesome to me. Mm. But I think it's, you know... I, Again, that's that's just something that's... It shows that when you do something for a show's creator, they're going to definitely take care of your network. Because <laughs> Adult Swim definitely won out in the Family Guy slash American Dad 
thing because, you know, wow, you brought back a show and now you actually get to get those new episodes within a week later. It's, it's pretty goddamn fucking good. But anyways, I kind of strayed from what we were talking about, but um, that's all the DC stuff that's been announced so far. Uh, you know, look for some more stuff. Um, I think another thing that we should transition to since we're talking about us, DC is uh, I had mentioned Suicide Squad. Um, We'll stay on that subject real quick. And Suicide Squad, it's been announced that Warner Brothers is targeting four people to be a part of Suicide Squad. Two of them are really big in my opinion, and I think if they got them, I would be like, whoa, this is awesome. Uh, Ryan Gosling, Will Smith, there you go, two big names, boom. We don't even have to go over the other two, but um, Margaret Robbie and uh, Tom Hardy. Hardy is, Bane, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Uh, well, no, he was uh, in uh, Star Trek Nemesis, I believe, if I remember correctly. He was the, um, I can't think of the character's name, but he was uh, Captain Picard's clone. Remember that? Uh, wait, wait, Tom I think Hardy? so. I think so. If I'm looking at the, the same picture, I think that's him, yeah. Oh, I got I I it. I, I, might, I might be wrong. I, I don't know what wrong. the hell you're talking about, man. Have you seen Star Trek Nemesis? Oh, Star Trek Nemesis. Yes. Yeah. Um, remember the guy? Remember the guy that oh, was? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah, that Tom yeah, Hardy? Yeah. Nah, mm, uh, probably. I got it now. Shit. Now I gotta look. <laughs> yeah. Now we gotta look it up. But um, you can look it up while I'm talking about this. But um, I not basically- know, well, if it, yeah, that is him. Holy shit. But see, no. Look. Okay. Yeah. I. I wow. I should. I don't, I'm usually a Star Trek guy. I did not realize I was Tom Hardy. But that. But that. He was still fucking. He was thin in that movie. Like he's bulked the fuck up. And right. it's so funny because then he did that movie This Is War with Chris Pine who. Played played Captain Kirk in the new yes. Star Trek. <laughs> so I Tom noticed Hardy that the other day. I was a, watching that, yeah. Tom Hardy does have a, 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 a Star Trek connection, but um, yeah, I mean, just, I mean, but the guy was fucking Bane! I mean, that alone, you know, I want him. That's the, you know. Well, let's see what happens. I, I would love to see him. Um, so basically, movie. that's what, <laughs> so basically, that's who they're looking for um, as far as the Suicide Squad. Um, they also note that obviously there was Batman Assault on Arkham, which that review will be coming out soon. I have to, we just got done with some new graphics for Geeky. So hopefully that'll be up within the next week or two. Um, but don't need, uh, I got one tiny problem is the, the lineup or their suicide squad movie right. doesn't really include like people that are like really, okay. Um, they haven't officially mentioned Harley Quinn, which I'm pretty sure like everybody wants to see Harley Quinn in some shape or form. I mean, obviously we had the animated version, but right. there has, yet to be a harley quinn on screen or at least no no i can't not that i'm aware of um right they said you know block okay here's the characters that they've announced for the dc for for suicide squad a blockbuster i'll be honest with you i've never heard I, and i've never heard of that multiplex no fucking idea i've heard that name but i have no idea <laughs> multiplex is a fucking some you know, i show eight yeah, movies at the same time <laughs> continue mind boggler no ja- fucking idea. Ja- no idea and then okay finally okay captain boomerang yes okay yes. captain boomerang is a you know Deadshot, yes, I yes. Really Deadshot, and Vixen rings a bell, but I'm not, you know. I think she's the one. I want to say she's the one that freezes stuff, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I just, you know, oh, I mean, oh. I mean, but then again, hey, you know, we just had a fucking movie with a talking tree, a walking tree, and a talking <laughs> raccoon. So they may. Are you putting that up on? I think it was Facebook, but yeah, continue. Yeah, I'm just saying is that you know that these are characters we're not familiar with, but then again, you know, who the fuck knew who Groot was a year ago? You know what I'm saying? That, like, so. Yeah. Hopefully they'll get a good point. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I was watching, I was, you know, I have being a comic book fan, I have, everyone seems to have that Marvel poster that has like all the Marvel characters on it. You know, like that, they sell that like in every fucking hot topic in Walmart or whatever. If you look at that poster, you don't see star Lord. You don't see Groot. You don't see rocket raccoon. You know, I mean, these are characters that are now have been fucking put on top of the mountain, but you know, these, you know, they took characters that weren't even, you don't even see them in the background in the fucking Marvel poster. Right. And they made a big, so hopefully, you know, maybe, Maybe, you know, two years from now, whatever, we'll know who the fuck Multiplex is and yeah, <laughs> Mike exactly. Bogler and Vixen. Right, right. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, so let's transition from DC to Marvel. Like I was talking about Marvel earlier, you know, I like the way that they're doing movies and they've been doing it really well. And I, I think that it all, it, before we talk about this, I think it kind of started with um, the Spider-Man trilogy, the first Spider-Man trilogy, because in my opinion, that right there kind of, I guess, launched them into the stratosphere of of doing movies and i think if dc had been around at that if dc had pushed harder at that point they probably would have done a lot better in my opinion at least 
But getting to the points that I'm making, big news. Um, basically, uh, Robert Downey Jr. has been teasing some stuff. He said, "Oh, oh there's not going to be an Iron Man four, but there's something big coming." Well, he, While he that said, I mean, he did say he would only do Iron Man four if um, if uh, what's his face directed it. Um, 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 um. Uh, Lethal Weapon. Uh, what the hell? I can't believe I forgot the guy's name. Uh, the actor, guy from Lethal Weapon, Braveheart. Uh, oh, oh, Mel yeah, Mel Gibson. Uh, Mel Gibson. He, he said he would only do Iron Man. Yeah, but wasn't that Mel a joke? Gibson. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that was a joke, but I mean, I know, like, he, I mean, I mean, between like, you know, uh, I don't know, what's, what's the Highlander movie that he did? Uh, you know, I think. Oh, and I know. Marvel, what Marvel would be. It's one of those deals where, like, obviously, it's not an obvious connection. Okay, Mel I, Gibson I, to be doing honest, an Iron Man before, movie. Before we talk about this, I I, I kind of think he was joking about that. I would, oh, I would hope. But I mean, you know, Marvel has made took risks in the past. I mean, I look. Uh, I understand he's had some horrible shit, and 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 and, right. and and you know he's pretty much dug his own grave by saying the horrible things that he said. But you know, Marvel's been known for ta- Marvel's known for taking risks. So if, right. if they were to let him Which do is, Iron Man four, what I'm about to say is huge risk okay. Um, but um okay so basically this is being deemed by marvel as marvel cinematic universe's phase three mm-hmm. quotation marks um basically it was announced and I, i'm guessing it's official now that um robert downey jr is going to be joining the cast of captain america 3 mm-hmm. um and it's said that this film will launch elements of the hit comic books crossover event civil war mm-hmm. so um basically Apparently, what this is all going to lead into, at least that's what I'm getting and I'm sure you're getting from this, Chris, is that Captain America 3 is going to set up Civil War or it's going to go. It's going to be Civil War. Yeah. Now, we don't know anything yet, but I'm thinking it's going to set that up because I don't think Iron Man versus Captain America really would be. I mean, OK, yeah, it's going to be in the movie, obviously. But at the same time, um, you probably want some of the other Marvel characters involved in Civil War as well. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And apparently this this happened uh, just as Marvel announced a new Civil War comic book is on the way next summer. So the sec- the, well, they're doing this. They're doing the Secret Wars um, series, which is it's kind of like a, a take on stuff they've done in the past. But in the Civil War, basically, uh, for those of uh, for those not too familiar with the comics, like Civil War basically kind of goes into it's very similar to the X Men um, storyline where there's in X Men it was the Mutant Registration Act where Civil right. War follows the um the superhero registration act where right. basically the government you know at least the united states government kind of steps up and says look you guys are fucking weapons you guys are literally weapons of mass destruction um we want to know who you are right you know now the funny thing is that when you get a character like um uh you know Ro- captain rogers you know who's, right. who's who's captain america everyone knows who he is i mean in that universe he's he is you know they have these museum exhibits i mean he's he's sort of but actually ironically he's the one that's a against uh being registered he's like you know we're we're doing to protect the safety of, of the people that we know and the people we love even though p- everyone knows who he is he's against and it being america you know america american you know kind of like um you know we should have our freedom as superheroes who work well, for fucking I, I free think, to keep I, our I, identity I and then i kind of saw that at number two in the, the winter soldier because you know he sees that his government isn't you know all it can be so to speak yeah, exactly so. i mean if, if fucking shield was infiltrated by hydra you know what's not to say the government wouldn't use this information and right. then ironically you know and the the, the 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 nice twist that i don't know if they set this up intentionally or not is because you know when iron man even like from iron man 2 where they were like oh you know uh the suit, you know, you need to hand over your suit to the government because, you know, it, it's a weapon of mass destruction. And he was against it. And this storyline, in the Civil War storyline, Tony Stark actually is for the registration. Where he's like, you know what? No, we should have registered. And one, I mean, partly to do with, like, you know, him working with Rhodey. Rhodey works for the government. Um, and it's sort of, and as some people say that he kind of has an ulterior motive where, like, you know, if people do reveal their identities, it kind of gives him a little bit of an advantage. But he becomes the poster boy for superheroes should register. While Captain America saying superheroes shouldn't register, and of course, you know that creates a conflict because here you got here you got two Avengers both on different sides of of the argument. So I think you know, and you can kind of I I like the idea of them using Iron Man. You know, of course I you know I want to see fifty fucking Iron Man movies, but you know uh, you could kind of phase out Iron Man after this movie. You know, what I'm saying you could set it up where he supports it, and then of course you know, and every other movie they they go oh, but Tony Stark said this and Tony Stark said that. They don't necessarily have to have Robert Downey Jr. And then you know you got Captain America who's you know all for freedom 
freedom and independence and you know we i shouldn't have to register myself you know with the government or whatever um right. even though he is captain america uh you know I, I like where it's going and this can you know uh the the marvel universe the tv shows do mix with the movies so this can uh wash over into Sh- agents of shield this can right. wash over into the daredevil show Right. Uh, you know, the, I think, and I think that's what I think they're doing that on purpose. They, I, they want to establish it in the movies. So when it spills over into the TV shows, it, you know, you got this whole new wave of, of conflict. Right. right. You know. Well, and apparently, you know, they've been also talking about the fact that, uh, the Avengers and the, um, Guardians of the Galaxy are going to do a huge movie. So, you know, hopefully that's going to come up. Um, also what they're trying to do, and this has just been a rumor and, and I, it's really not have it really hasn't been like proven yet but one of the huge things that they've been talking about and it's again it's not confirmed i'm going to say this 20 more times because people will be like oh my god they said this no 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 it's not confirmed they're trying to get spider-man to be part of the avengers yes. which i think would be huge but the problem is is sony owns the property mm-hmm. so they have to work out something with sony where they can do all that yeah i think i the the the, the gist that i get is sort of like because the amazing spider-man and the amazing spider-man 2 weren't as big a movies as as they were expected to be you know i'm no way am i trying to take away any of the thunder but people thought these movies were going to fucking revolutionize the you know and, and be groundbreaking and unfortunately the fans have kind of spoke out and said eh, it's okay well yeah <laughs> if you think about it if you think about it if you you look here because here, here's the problem when they decided that they wanted to reboot spider-man which i thought was stupid yeah so not, soon after <laughs> yeah i thought it was i thought it was stupid they should have taken a break and then done it um but there again you know these contracts by having a certain property for example like spider-man you have to do it within a certain amount of time and you know whatever um, so the problem is, is you have the first Spider-Man from the first trilogy compared with the first Spider-Man of this new trilogy. A lot of people like the first one, the first first one, not the first one of the new trilogy. I know this is confusing, but whatever. Number two of the first trilogy, I thought was the best Spider-Man movie that they've made to date. I thought it was really good. It was actually the best rated film of that year. Should have gotten at least, it, it should have gotten nominated at least for an Emmy. That was one of the reasons why they changed the podcast policy and made it like 10 movies get nominated which is fine um definitely thought that should have been nominated but that's neither here nor there um you compare it with this one and a lot of people go it was okay but it wasn't it wasn't number two from the first trilogy you know Mm -hmm. and i know we're kind of getting off topic of you know civil war but you know it's kind of the same thing what they're trying to do is they're trying they see how these crossover movies are doing so why don't we take why don't we take the risk bring sony in and be like look let's just fucking make a huge ass movie with spider-man being part of the avengers and boom <laughs> you uh, dude you, are you telling me that you wouldn't watch that movie by the way by the way nothing against what's his name who plays spider-man now uh, Andrew Garfield. however you know i would rather have i would rather have what's his name back as uh spider-man Tophie mcguire Tophie mcguire that would not Tophie. Be what, was it Tophie? was it Topher, no, i mean no not Tophie mcguire no Tophie yeah, mcguire grace was I, Tophie, in that yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> I, I was kind of i was getting confused there um Fuck Tophie. But yeah, I, I would, I would, I think he should come back as Spider Man. If you're gonna do an Avengers movie and you're gonna do it right, you get him back and you make him Spider Man. I mean, look at how many fucking Hulks have we been through already. <laughs> exactly, like bring him at, back at as Spider Man. We had uh, what was the guy? Uh, 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 well, I mean, I, I think that it, it, no offense, to, no offense, <laughs> no offense to what's his name, the new Spider Man, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. No offense to him, but if we're gonna do an Avengers, I think you need to have more of an aged Spider Man that does a better job of, you know. That kicks everybody's ass. That's you know experienced more like more like what Batman is in Batman vs Superman coming up. You know what I mean? Like I would like to have him be more experienced, more than coming in as a person that oh hey, I'm just like a teenager kind of guy. You know whatever. So no more fucking Twilight Superman. That's fine. <laughs> Um, but moving on because we're running out of time here. Uh, last thing we want to talk about briefly is there's obviously, if you haven't heard by now, because if you're not huge Marvel or DC fans and you're an idiot, um, basically there's going to be a Gambit movie and they've previously announced that 
Um, Gambit is going to be... Um, I'm trying to find the article real quick, sorry. Um, Gambit is going to be... Magic Mike. <laughs> Magic Mike. <laughs> well, I wouldn't quite put it that way, but yes, obviously, Magic Mike uh, himself. Um, God, where is, what's his name again? It's eluding me. <laughs> sorry, dude. Like, I'm trying to find this article, and it like disappeared all of a sudden. Uh, that says it. I don't know his name off the top of my head. Uh, uh, what's his show that's this Channing part? Tatum. The most Anglo name on the fucking face of the planet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Channing Tatum. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find Lovey. it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna re-edit this part because <laughs> this part's just funny. Oh, Channing Tatum, Tatum Tots. All right, so who were, Gambit is going to be? Channing Tatum is the guy that was announced to be Gambit, mm-hmm. and um, you know some some people might be like, oh, him? Why? <laughs> what is he gonna do? Sit there and dance the whole time? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so um, basically, Channing Tatum has been outspoken about Gambit. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, what he's trying to do is he's trying to have his in own input on what he thinks Gambit could be. And, you know, I'm kind of liking what he's trying to say. And he said, you know, I don't want to give too much away because we don't know that much right now other than who Gambit is, he says. We really do want to try our hardest to give something fresh. We're obviously going to go to the Saving the World superhero movies eventually, but maybe not for the first one. We want to introduce this character in a very different way. When you try to do something different, you never know right off the bat what that is. We're feeling our way and really have to just prove the concept of that person. Um, Apparently, they're still trying to find a writer, and that's kind of holding it up at the moment. Um, basically the rumor is, is this movie, there's, there's a title, there's a, on July 18th, 2018, there's in quotations, untitled movie, mm-hmm. Fox Marvel movie. So people are thinking that's where Gambit's going to be. But, um, I, I kind of like where he's, he's trying to push Gambit. You know, it's the same thing like Ryan Reynolds was saying, okay, this is what I would like to see, um, Deadpool be like. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of liking what I'm hearing from him. And, and the reason I say that is because... I like somebody that actually goes into their character and wants to build that character from the beginning instead of just being like, okay, this is my script. I'm going to do this. Yeah. You know? So that gives me help. That gives me hope for the Gambit movie. Um, I kind of, no offense to Channing Tatum, but um, the guy they had for Gambit in the Wolverine movie, mm-hmm. um, I thought he would be a good Gambit to bring, to do because he, 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 he seemed like it, he seemed like he was doing a good job of the Gambit character, so you know why not have him come back? You know, but yeah, I've, I, in my mind, I, I mean, maybe it's call it the influence from like the the '90s cartoon. I've always pictured Gambit as a thin guy, you know. Right. Now, I mean, musk like cut up, yeah. But Channing Tatum to me, he, he, he's in my opinion, Channing Tatum is kind of too bulky, you know. But then, I mean, they. But made, then again, yeah, I don't know. It, I just, they've done some. They've done some interesting things with people makeup wise. So you know, and you know, there again, these. Some of these actors will do, you know, um, change the way they look or something. Change the way they look, uh, just for the movie. Like for, you know, the guy that played the original Spider-Man, he balked up, yeah, and became like jacked. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm very happy with what's coming out of for Gambit. I think we've talked a lot of geeky stuff today, and hopefully, you guys. Yeah, it's been a while since our last episode. I yeah, mean, the last episode while. we did was for the the Bent Con, um, and you know, and a lot of people, you know, we we got a we got a good response from that. And you know, when I went to Comic Con and I was representing the podcast, I mean, a lot of people got it. A lot of people, if they went to check out the podcast right as right after Comic Con, that was the episode that they you know that they heard first. So now we're back to you know uh, our form. Uh, you know, not that, right. not that there's anything wrong with uh, interview episodes. Um, I kind of have a couple ideas for stuff in the back. We are working towards uh, other future interviews. Unfortunately, the one ones that we didn't get during comic-con and, and, <laughs> and other ones that i kind of have in the back of my head uh, yeah we we really want to try and get more i mean really what i've been doing is because i'm i'm a master of getting people on shows well more specifically the Chami faithful podcast i'm trying to eventually we're going to try to kind of do both especially coming into 2015 i want to try to change it so that okay yes i have guests on tsunami faithful podcast but also i want to try to get more guests for this podcast as well because i think that we can do a lot more geeky stuff with this podcast and i, I would like to do that and there may be some geeky exclusives that are sponsored by the tsunami uh, not the tsunami faithful podcast, two strangers one podcast um so look for those as well because chris is going to be helping me with those oh, yeah no after 
after after getting a taste of Comic Con and stuff like that, man, I I have been like reinvigorated. You're um, on board with me. Aren't we, you? we 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 we've <laughs> just been. I mean, as for server space, we've just been renewed for a new year for another year. So uh, you know that. So we're we're good to go. I mean, I you know I'm, I mean we we may have to start deleting old episodes, but then again, I don't think people care about what I was talking about two years ago. You know, well I'll, that's I'll that's the certain, problem. I'll keep that's certain that. episodes like all the interview episodes. I'll keep only because you know people were nice enough to come on the show. But well, like, that's part of the that's part of the problem that we're having right now with the Tsunami Faithful podcast is our episodes from the past, like the first couple episodes, really haven't been played. However, we kind of want to keep those at least in storage so that way if people want to go back and listen to them, they still can. So we're trying to figure that out as well. So it's going to be interesting when we get to that point how we're going to have to figure that out. Yeah. But I if mean, you want to just delete them, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I, that's the whole thing is that like, because, you know, when you go and look up the stats, uh, the episodes, the only ep- the older episodes that get downloaded are the ones that we've done as interviews. Right. You know, they're like, oh, I like this person. Let me see what they're, you know, let me see what they're interview but like just the the the, the filler episode <laughs> there's not to use a anime you know the filler episodes sort of don't which in my opinion uh there is no such thing as a filler episode but um every episode of two strangers one podcast is an awesome fucking episode but uh <laughs> not that you're trying to play that up now that yeah but uh we're gonna have to start getting rid of some of the the episodes that aren't but i mean we're still we're like at 80 percent right now so we still got plenty of time before we hit that fucking maximum maximum capacity um thing so uh unfortunately there has been a slight change and i didn't even have a chance to talk to you about this we are now two strangers one podcast dot net. Two uh, S one P has gone the way of the dodo, um, and of course, you know. Uh, so we are. <laughs> It's kind of all spelled out again. Two Strangers One Podcast dot net. Uh, you can find uh, the links for everything show related. Uh, you can find the links to our iTunes page. You know, if you if so, however you came across this episode, uh, you can click to iTunes, subscribe to us on there. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, and you have a Android device, you can follow us using the Stitcher app. That's S T I T C H E R. That's pretty much the the app that I use all the time when I'm driving down to New York City to meet celebrities. Um, and the cool thing. About the stick up. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I had to play that real quick because I I don't know if you guys have uh, been seeing it, but there's been some. <laughs> Apparently, Randy Orton has taken over the internet. Yeah, there are people who are putting ran- any any, <laughs> any video of like someone falling or you know just randomly falling. Like, yeah. they'll insert Randy Orton doing his uh, wait. What's the move that he does? Uh, I don't know. Uh, RKO. RKO. Yeah. And um, so they're they're input they're putting him into videos. Uh, you know, someone like if they randomly fall down, but it looks like Randy Orton just popped out of nowhere and RKO'd them. Um, yeah, that's hilarious. So once again, if you uh, if you have an Android device, you can find us on the Stitcher app. S T I T C H E R. And the cool thing is you don't have to use up your data. You can download the episodes while you're in your Wi-Fi spot or if you're at a public library or a McDonald's or wherever else you get your Wi-Fi for free. Download the episodes and listen to them later on without killing the data on your phone. Um, you can find us on Facebook.com at Facebook.com slash Two Strangers One Podcast. Um, of course, if you want to show any kind of support the, for the show, it takes two seconds to either share the page, to like the page, or share this particular episode on your page. I mean, everyone and their grandmothers on fucking Facebook now. Um, if you would like to get in contact with us, you can contact us um, at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. Uh, so everything, I mean, we're kind of, uh, I, I, I kind of like that we got two strangers, one podcast.net. Um, maybe I'll, we'll start calling it the two strangers, one podcast network. So it kind of makes sense. Um, and also if you are on Twitter, you can find us at stranger podcast, that little at logo, um, at stranger podcast at Twitter, twitter.com <laughs> slash stranger podcast. I forgot exactly how to, you're losing your mind. Yeah. So, uh, with that said, and I'm, I just want to see something real quick. Um, I acquiesced the floor to you, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I really have nothing else after that. <laughs> All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Pascrillo. My last name is P-E-S-C-R-I-L-O. You can also follow me on Tumblr. At, you can tumble with me there. It's uh, paulpascrillo.tumblr.com. I've actually put up an interesting article about movie theaters because a lot of people have been asking, oh, are movie theaters going to die or whatever? Um, I pretty much detail out why movie theaters aren't going to die. Um, so you, you should go there and read that read that um, blog that I put up because it's it's very interesting. Uh, Paulpascrillo.tumblr.com. It's you know again, 
it's just telling you how you know how the theaters basically how theaters aren't going to die. They may limit them. They there might be not as many, but they're not going to die anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, people thought when VCRs came out, it was going to kill the movie theaters. Well, they <laughs> think that they're, it's basically the reason I wrote this article is because a lot of people are like, "Oh, Netflix is going to kill um, the movie theater business," and I'm like, nah. the movie theater business just killed Netflix by not allowing them to have um, the IMAX film, the the second Crouching Tiger mm-hmm. in the I'm IMAX. Saying, if, if VCRs didn't kill the movie theaters, yeah. DVRs and TiVo didn't kill the movie theaters. So Netflix movie good. theaters aren't going anywhere. And I, I detail why. There's a lot of there's a lot of examples, and they do make sense of why they won't do it. Um, and then you can obviously I have an ask.fm. It's ask.fm slash pubscrow. Uh, I get a lot of tsunami related questions. I wouldn't mind to get some other, you know, non tsunami related questions. So make sure you ask me questions there. Again, it's ask.fm slash pulp So that's, that's it. That's it. We certainly enjoy- yeah, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening, had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. Bro. Bye. Put down the alcohol, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I drink Bye. virgin sangria. Lies. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee. But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. And punny. But... <laughs> <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a material. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her. Fucking, she's impressed. I am. Summer, she got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Fuck a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, I come! Like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information 
Chris Cologne like a motherfucker. I will and his totally book, read this. Double jackpot. I'm serious. I'm gonna recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R rated version. There could be nudie in it and you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. <laughs> No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool, and fuck you, I'm out!